everyone. My name is Alessio. I'm the founder and CEO of Forward Fooding, and I'm super excited to have here today Monica Navarro, uh, co-founder and creative director of Delicious and Sons. Thank you first and foremost, uh, uh, Monica, for taking the time uh, to get this interview. Uh, can we start if you, with you introducing yourself and uh, what Delicious and Son uh, creates? Okay, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, I say that I'm a, a food activist. I really, I really believe on, on changing the things on the food scenario. That's why this is my second, my second project uh, as an entrepreneur. And um, I really, I really change from my first one just because I wanna, I wanna create a positive impact on people and and the, and the planet through these inclusive products that we that we create, and always thinking from the from the Mediterranean to the world. This is this is this is a kind of a of a of a way of explaining myself. I'm I'm really passionate about what am I doing. I'm really passionate about being an entrepreneur. I, I, I love it. And I, I really love that the way that in food tech, the woman is, is taking like a huge, a huge step. But uh, it's a still, it's a still really something really tiny. In, even in food tech, you can find more men than women. Then we have to continue like digging to find more women like that are ready to be to be in a in a place in in food tech big time monica and this is changing already as we speak so i i think it's a testament that something big is actually happening in this sector and uh, i can't agree more than than with you about the fact that we need more women you know to to actually get involved uh, in uh, in food tech and uh, I think you know you are uh, the living uh, uh, tes uh, testimony of the fact that you know you can actually build businesses that, that actually are thriving, and uh, um, this can inspire hopefully also more women to get to get involved. Um, <laughs> yes, I think so. I'm, I'm very, I'm very well, uh, I very well believe that the, that's the case. Um, can you explain us a little bit more about what actually Delicious and Sun does and what your products are? We are, and, 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 and we believe that we are being part of this movement for change, improving the lives of people, the planet, and all living things that inhabit it through delicious, honest, healthy, and of course, sustainable food. Um, it's a, it's a led purpose-driven sustainable food, creating a positive impact on on people and the planet, as I told you before, you know, through these inclusive products that we create, organic, vegan, non-GMO, gluten-free, non-added sugars, uh, paleo, keto, that respects a wide range of eating habits. It's, it's, it's something that is happening nowadays in, 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 in all the all homes. I mean, when you are now having lunch, well, now it's difficult with COVID, but uh, having lunch or dinner with, with friends, Every time more and more you find different diets and different opinions about food. And it's great to have a brand that really believes that can change this. That's why we don't say that we don't, we don't have the flag of organic or the flag or vegan. We say that we are an inclusive brand thinking of all of these, um, uh, all of these certifications we have that it gives you this wide range of, of eating habits and then people that can, can use it. No? Our strategy basically is to create this positive impact and covers the entire value chain from seed to jar. We carefully consider our impact and how to improve sustainability every step of the way, which is I think for us that we are tiny, we are a tiny company. Imagine if we can do it, this is always my, my thought, if we can do it, why the big ones doesn't, they are not working to do it, no? And uh, we say always that cooking a better world, no? Shaping this sustainable future for, for an action plan for the planet, no? That's awesome. I love, I love that, Monica. It's, um, and especially the analogy about, you know, the kind of David and Golia, you know, um, thing because uh, you're right I mean if, if all of us can do a little to actually improve our food system uh, this can actually happen right and that's where 
I think there is um in, in your words there is a lot of passion for sure you know about <laughs> always it's the only way to survive as an entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and I always love to actually dig deeper into um where this all I guess company you know started can you tell us a bit more about where did you, the original idea for delicious and songs you know came from well we have been I mean I'm 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 a sociologist sociologist um, I have been always working for international multinationals and one day I decided 15 years ago to be a food entrepreneur because I realized that this was my passion I want to be an entrepreneur I didn't know what to do and I say okay food is one of my things really that I, it comes with me I, I really I really enjoy and I really believe that I can do something then um, I have been a food entrepreneur from the last 15 years and this is my second food project when uh, we knew when when we launched delicious and songs there was a different way to do business the food sector was moving and is moving very very fast and we saw that consumers demand more consumers than the the, the classic or the conventional distributor channels but the consumers demands on topics of healthy food options and sustainable brands was outpacing what was available in the supermarkets. Um, we market research for 18 months, both in the US and in Europe, and invested in, in, in innovation to create our new range of products that are, as I say, inclusive or certified organic, vegan, gluten-free, on GMO, non-added sugars, all of and our objective from the beginning was to become a certified big corporation and it was boring to our dna that makes a huge difference as again with the with the big companies no and it was at the values as a company it helped us a lot to 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 try to to follow the path of the big corporation to help us even build all of our value chain and and now we have been certified for big operation for two years, two years and a half. Um, and this is, I think, is the most important seed of the of the of the starting point of the idea. That's awesome. So it really sustainability and, uh, and, totally. and really being cautious about you know how you produce your food is really being uh, at the uh, at the very forefront of uh, of what delicious and so on you know in the early days uh, was all about and I guess uh, it still stands for and I guess the yeah. corporation uh, um, approval has also been uh, I think a testament of that isn't it and it has been super difficult it was it take us a long time like one year and a half or two to be certified and I think it has to be like this because if not it's nothing it's not such a like a stamp that you buy and you pay for this and you have it no no you have to you have to have it in your yes you know, in your essence uh, which is it makes a, a huge difference for sure fantastic Monica thanks for sharing that it's uh, I think it's very inspiring uh, uh, to hear also the journey that you guys have uh, are going through uh, to actually become a B Corp um, speaking of journeys can you can you give us like a highlight you know looking back at when you started uh, this uh, this company can you tell us what is the moment that kind of stood out well I have two moments, two completely different, one from the office and another one from the Mediterranean, which is a place that we make grow our, our vegetables. But uh, one of the things is we organize every year, this year is going to be the third Mediterranean beach cleanup. And we say it's tri-dimensional because we do the beaches, we do the, 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 the sea bed of the, of the water, and then with the scuba divers, we dive into the into the water. And um, the first year that we organized this, it was like amazing because we saw that much more that, of course, we recollect a lot of garbage, but uh, much more than the, the, the pounds, the kilos we recollect, it was the importance of making the people conscious of our impact. And then our amazing planet, you know, the, the only home we have. And 
this this moment, the, the first year we organized, we were like, I don't know, like almost 200 people plus volunteers. It was amazing up in the Costa Brava. Um, now in April, in April, we are gonna organize a tiny one, but in Barcelona, uh, the 21st for, for Air Day. In fact, that we are gonna plant 300 um, trees in Nepal in a, pro in a project that we collaborate, but at the same time, the 21st, we are gonna be in Barcelona, in Barceloneta, organizing a beach cleanup. And the, and the huge Mediterranean beach cleanup we organize in the Costa Brava is gonna be again the 18th of September. But this is, wow, this is a, 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 an amazing day that, that I can't forget year by year about the consciousness people of all ages, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And the other moment it was, it was when we were working for the value chain that we have, and we, are, we realize this sentence that we say, we, we have this triple impact food strategy. Um, we say that we control from seed to jar our impact. And realizing this, it was, it was pretty impressive from the seed to the lands to everything like that, 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 that the, the kilometers, the distance between the lands and the factory, how much CO2 are we gonna, you know, it's like, this was amazing because you have it on your brain, you have it in your strategy, but until you don't like draw it. And we realize that we can say this from seed to jet, we have, and positive impact on our planet. This was really like, it's a still for me, it's like, wow, I feel like my body is shaking a little bit. It's, it's pretty impressive. Furthermore, because much more because we are tiny. Uh, is this, this is what I'm always saying. If, if we are tiny and we can be so conscious, why don't the big players don't do it? It's a question of money, no? That's that's the shame, but uh, but I think everybody can do it if they feel it, if they have it on the essence, they can work for it. Definitely, I'm 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 pretty sure. Amazing, Monica. Again, I love actually the sound of all of this. So I can't agree more with you on uh, the fact that each of us, you know, can do their own share to really make our our world a better place, and most and foremost, as again as food, as food entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, make our food system better, right? Especially when you can control, as you said, from jar to from seed to jar, the whole process and the whole impact you can have if you scale this, you know, at the and and at the at the bigger level, then you can see how how much positives you know you can create. Um, fantastic! Thanks a lot for sharing this. And uh, then we've talked about you know all the journey that you've gone through, and I guess lots of hope, you know. Uh, has been has been put oh. <laughs> at stake to actually make it happen. So, what are your hopes for the future of Delicious and Sun? From a business point of view, it's to make Delicious and Sons a household name, a brand leader in the Mediterranean food. From a holistic point of view, it's to make a difference, a real difference. It's not the greenwashing, a real difference to raise awareness of the pressing issues of our time climate change, food waste, and how companies like other B Corps can create positive impact and show that private sector and profit and for-profit companies are not evil and, and can be for the benefit of society for sure as a whole and, and for the betterment of the planet, you know, without doing any harm or even the other way around doing good. Amazing. And, uh... As a, as a woman, I guess, who started the company, um, how, how have you found being a woman actually uh, has shaped up your journey into breaking into this sector? I'm going to say just one word, alone. alone. <laughs> okay. no. Can you tell us also when you actually started, Monica, the company? The company, Delicious and Sons started in uh, 2016. 2016, and it's it's a young company, and we have another one. The previous one it was the Delish, the Delish Shop, 
it was a retail business completely different, but it was more like a niche brand, a gourmet food brand, completely the opposite of what we have done now. Wow. So it was alone, alone as in, I guess, back in 2016, yes, there were not many, I guess, <laughs> women who followed your path. <laughs> But uh, anything else you want to add on uh, or maybe like any advice that you would give to your younger self if you were to start this again? Forget that, uh, that, that, that they are women or men. It doesn't matter. They have to fight until the end. And especially they have to fight for a better planet if they feel it. You know, it's the only advice. No matter if you're a woman or if you're a no matter, you have to fight. And especially if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to think that you have to work from Monday to Sunday, nonstop. And at the same time, having your own life because you need it, no? Then this is, this is the thing you have to fight. And I'm not going to say you have to fight as a man or a man has to fight as a woman. No, you have to definitely fight with, with the power of passion at the end. Because without passion, I don't think, I don't think, you can do the same things, you know? It's like... Big time, big time. I think uh, you, you said, you know, when you have a calling or you feel that, you know, that's your calling, then uh, you need to go full on with it, right? And that's where <laughs> fighting and uh, I guess uh, struggling at the beginning is part of the process, isn't it? It is. Fantastic. We're just uh, going to fire, I'm just going to fire another couple of questions to you uh, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, so undoubtedly, Delicious and Sony is a company which embraces sustainability. You know, we talked about it earlier. So what are some of the main issues that currently are currently facing the world of agri-food tech and why do you think innovation is important to actually solve them? As I say, climate change is one of the most important, if not the most important issue the planet is facing right now. And the food sector is an integral part of this issue as both as a polluter and a contributor to the problem as well as a resource to make changes and fight against the negative impacts of climate change. And there are many different areas that affect food sector. I mean, sustainability in ingredients, organic, plant-based, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, one thing that I, I have friends on, on plant-based protein now, uh, that the problem that we, we find now is that more, the majority of them are not organic certified. But you think, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have this burger that is plant-based, which is great, but at the end it's not organic. And it's something that I think they have to evolve. They have to innovate really quickly because at the same time they are the consumer is not thinking this the consumers when you talk with the people i know that because now right now we want to launch for example a bolognese pasta sauce with uh with a vegetal protein of course and it's it's much more than impossible to find uh, an organic certified um vegetable protein, which is, I think the people doesn't, when when you say to the people, okay, this is a burger, a plant-based burger or the, the any substitute of plant-based, the people think that this is organic. And I think that this is a misunderstanding that is gonna, it's gonna really, really difficult to communicate against this. And not just for the, all of the, pro, all of the vegetable protein, it's, it's going to be for the rest of the brands because at the end, the consumer doesn't, is quite confused. And this is the worst thing that could happen. Then for me, the sustainability in the ingredients, uh, especially on plant base, they have to, they have to accelerate on the innovation and they need to put them. When you buy now a burger, for example, that is, that is plant-based, it's, it's, it's not organic. And when I say this to, to, my colleagues or to the people that we were working with is like, wow, this is a surprise. I was thinking I was, I was buying, buying organic this and it's not. Then I think it has to be really quick because it's going to affect all of the organic brands that we work on plant-based, you know, another. Then sustainability in packaging, new materials, FSC paper, 
recyclable and recycled materials circular economy is the problem with that is is that it's super expensive to use this kind of materials and the governments and the EO, they, they, they need to do something. They need to help us, to help of all of the brands that we really try to be completely sustainable. For example, we are now plastic-free brand, which you can imagine what a nightmare it is, because it is. At the end, when you send a palette, when you send the products, you have to, to use this kind of wrapping plastic paper. This, this was the last thing of the chain, but it was there and it was really difficult. And all of this is money. And I think we need to have any kind of help from the, from the European governments, of course. Then food waste is the other thing. And I think there are players that they are doing excellent work on this, on the food waste. Um, and emissions, which is something really, really difficult to change for me. And I, and I see all every day. Fantastic, Monica. Oh, wow. I feel we've opened like a, <laughs> a world of, of problems that however, you know, are being tackled by people like you, which is great to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and, but yeah, I'm with you. I think we need to accelerate a lot on, uh, on how we can actually change tackle really these issues with, with innovation. So uh, just a very last question in regards again to the future. We always uh, like to talk about the future here. <laughs> what, what, is the, um, what is the most excited, what are you most excited about, about the future of food and food tech? Innovation. They, 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 they need to, things, things are moving so quickly. The ability to create new products, to surprise the, the consumer with innovations that not only were, were not able um, just until a few years ago, but we weren't even considered possible or thought about as a possibility. No? What excites me most about is the positive impact we can all have on the planet with regards to, to this climate change, from going to organic, to reducing animal consumption, new innovations in, in packaging, recycle. That's fantastic. Okay. A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of work. <laughs> to do that, but yes, I think uh, it's a really exciting uh, developments and um, I'm with you, they, they will become the new norm. So yeah. with people like you um, working, you know, in these fields, we can actually make a difference. Monica, thank you so much for taking the time at, out of your busy schedule to, to talk to us today. It's been a great pleasure to interview you and uh, we'll, we'll publish the video uh, very soon over YouTube. Perfect. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure.